fight. For centuries, this phenomenon was a mystery that eluded mankind. Until barely a hundred years ago, birds alone could travel through the air in a direction other than that of the wind. It is remarkable how far we've come in such a short time frame, beginning with the earliest attempts of flying machines. All the way up to today with speedy aircraft such as this speedy Cessna 152. Yeah, never mind that the cars on the highway were moving faster than the plane. Anyhow, do you ever wonder what makes an airplane fly? I could drag that one out for the entire duration of this video, but unfortunately my proof topic isn't that elementary. Over the next few minutes I will try to explain to you the Venturi effect, which does contain the same principles that do have to do with an object's ability to become airborne. Both relate to Bernoulli's principle, which explains the proportionate relationship between velocity and pressure. This relationship is what allows an airplane to fly. Essentially, when air is moving at a high velocity, pressure is low. High velocity leads to low pressure, and vice versa. When an airplane is taking off, the cambered shape of the wing makes it so that the air takes longer to flow over the top than under it. The resulting pressure differential is to create slips, and thus makes the plane move. Like this. Just kidding. Here we go. The Venturi effect is similar to Bernoulli's principle. It is the reduction in fluid pressure that results when the fluid flows through a constricted section of a pipe. From this diagram, we can see that the speed of the fluid, or air, flowing through the pipe increases as it passes through the narrow opening and the resulting reduction in pressure. The fluid, or air, velocity must increase through the constriction, while its pressure must decrease due to the law of conservation of energy, which states that the gain in kinetic energy is balanced by a drop in pressure. The Venturi effect is found in several places in aviation. Let's start here, the engine. This Cessna is powered by a four-cylinder, horizontally opposed Lycoming engine. It utilizes a carburetor, a device which blends a fuel and air mixture before engine air take. Inside a carburetor is a Venturi, which is an hourglass-shaped restriction in the airflow passage. When the fast-moving air reaches the Venturi, it must speed up to get through the restriction. When the airspeed increases in the Venturi, however, there is a drop in air pressure. The faster the air moves, the more the pressure drops. This fuel-air mixture is regulated manually to ensure maximum efficiency in flight at different altitudes and power settings. The Venturi effect can also pose a problem with the engine though. Throttle lights can form at or near a partly closed throttle valve, potentially cutting off the engine. The water vapor in the inducted air condenses and freezes due to the cooling as air passes through the throttle valve. Since the temperature drop is usually 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, ice can form at outside temperatures greater than freezing, and far greater than freezing if the humidity is high. For this reason, we utilize carburetor heat for this knob, whatever you want to call it, often in flight to ensure that ice does not form. Another component of the Cessna 152 in which we find the Venturi effect at work is the pitot-static system, which supplies ram air pressure and static pressure to the pitot tube, which gives the pilot readings on the airspeed indicator, the rate of climb indicator, and the altimeter. The air is accelerated through each of these two narrow openings, and the instruments are actuated by the resulting atmospheric pressure reading. Since the cabin in this aircraft is not pressurized, these instruments will not be significantly affected by a leaking static tube. But in a pressurized cabin, like you would have in an airliner, for instance, it is a different story. The altimeter would show the elevation of the cabin pressure setting, and the vertical speed indicator would show no changes in climb or descent, because there is no change to the cabin pressure that the controlled leak in the instrument would show. The airspeed would be indicated at the altitude that the cabin is set at, meaning that if you're higher than the cabin pressure, you would read a lower indicated airspeed than, the actual, than what you're actually flying. Because of the air being more dense, there's a lower static pressure difference. I know that is a lot of information thrown at you in a very short time. If you take anything from this, remember that the Venturi effect is the correlation of speed and pressure pertaining to a fluid's flow through an open. High velocity equates to low pressure, and low pressure equates to high velocity. It is this law that makes flight possible. 
Well, it's time for me to go. Happy flying, folks. Yes.